good morning or actually good afternoon because it's already 12 p.m. here in Poland. Uh, welcome everyone to our Stand Versity webinar. Uh, today we have an amazing guest, uh, Professor Murat Gunal, true expert from these the simulations. So, and if you want to know anything about how the simulations work, how to apply them, what you should do when it comes to business. This is your guy, this is your expert, and he's our lecturer at Stanversity program as well. So, Professor Gudal, thank you for finding the time to talk to us. Hi, Hi thank you, Majesh, thank you. So, so it's it's very nice to, to, to have you here. Uh, that's super appreciated. So maybe could you give us a little bit of the introduction to yourselves, what, like, who you are, uh, what you're doing, where have you been lecturing, what is your specialty, like what sure. you love? <laughs> sure, thanks for this opportunity, first of all. Uh, it's a great opportunity for me to uh, be talking about simulation today with you. Uh, I, I am uh, actually educated in the UK, Lancaster University. I have master's degree and PhD degrees. Uh, I completed my PhD in 2008, uh, which was years ago. Uh, my focus was uh, simulation and healthcare, uh, the performance uh, of hospitals, uh, but also I specialized in uh, general use of simulation uh, in many domains, including industry. And uh, recently I made uh, research on industry 4.0 and simulation. Uh, so uh, this is in fact the main reason why I'm here now. Uh, as a simulation expert, uh, I can say, and we will talk today about simulation uh, a lot, uh, I can say that simulation is the uh, one of the drivers of this industry 4.0 uh, wind, let's say. Uh, so uh, I, I specialized in uh, operation research and simulation. Uh, for uh, I, I can say that simulation is a rather generic term and it is depicted by many uh, engineering and business uh, uh, studies. So uh, I'm taking from operation research point of view. Okay, so let's imagine that I have a manufacturing facility. So what actually is the simulation? Is this like like five Excel cells and I can multiply them? Is it a simulation already? Or what like what is the definition of simulation if you like would ask like like could you explain it to someone who is like just beginning the, the journey on sure. that. Uh, we'll start from this point. What is simulation? Uh, simulation is uh, mimicking a system uh, on computer. Okay. Uh, I can say that it is computer involved, first of all. Uh, although there are some uh, perceptions about simulation that if you do a physical training, that is also perceived as simulation. But uh, okay. this is rather not correct. So uh, whatever you do in simulation, in a way, uh, to mimic a system uh, is called simulation. So that means in a, this general uh, definition, even an Excel sheet with some cells playing with values in, uh, in those cells is a, is a simulation. And we see examples of that in business. Uh, uh, in many domains, if you do a, a budget planning, for example, mm -hmm. what you do for the following years is a simulation. And it's an economic simulation. For, for the industry, likewise, if you are talking about uh, planning your uh, capacity for the following years, and if you create an Excel sheet for that, uh, it is also a simulation. But this is a rather shallow definition of simulation. And uh, we are now, in this era, uh, more way uh, ahead of that Excel sheet. So, <laughs> Uh, we are not only simulated with Excel, but also with many specialized software. Uh, and okay. those specialized yeah. software creates a market, I can say. Okay, so, but just, so if I try to plan the revenue forecast, if I pr try, try to plan the production, right, anything like that, I need to, you know, produce 100,000 of units to ensure mm -hmm. my fixed costs are covered and var I start making money and variable costs uh, are lower than the margin I create. This is already a simulation. So pretty much every single exercise that you do as a manager comes to the simulating things. Um, I, I can say that this is uh, true because this simulation word is a very generic term 
Okay, uh, that's why I, I agree with what you, you are saying. But what uh, in, in a specialized form, what uh, simulation means is more than that. It's not only to plan ahead. Uh, it's also to do with some uh, specifics uh, of your operation and your strategy. So in operational term, uh, your product design also involves simulation. For example, in a CAD software, computer-aided design software, what you design as a product, uh, okay, can be simulated. That can also be called simulation. What you do there, if there are moving parts in your product, uh, before actually creating a prototype of it uh, in, in physical form, you do uh, its design and uh, simulation on computer beforehand. Okay? Like in CAD, so, for instance. Exactly. In CAD, what you do is, with moving parts, uh, you try to find what is colliding with what, or what kind of heat it produces, or what kind of electrical signals it generates, etc. So all this done uh, before you actually do the product or prototype or production uh, on computer. So this is the safest way of doing things. And uh, nowadays, with, with the technology we have, this is uh, quite uh, easy and uh, ready to make. Okay, cool. So, so this is like the simulation thing. This is like pretty pretty much everything in production planning, in product development, in business forecasting, in pretty much everything. So, let's assume that sim like if you don't know simulations, is it a fair point? If you don't know simulation, you don't yes. know how to run business. Uh, I can say that too, correct. And also, please bear this in mind that uh, simulations can uh, be done with models, okay? When okay. I say model, okay, we have also a mind model. And in fact, uh, in traditional way, uh, managers or executive directors of companies have their uh, business models in mind and make those make their daily decisions or strategic decisions with those models in mind. Where, so, whereas computer models or simulations uh, are supporting those decisions and taking their brain and separating to whole organization in a way, uh, from micro level, micro level to macro level. So, uh, simulation is all around. And in fact, there is a saying in our community that everything is simulation other than real life. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, I can tell this again. Everything is simulation other than real life. So uh, this is very broad term, but I, I don't want to miss with uh, you know mess up with uh, many things. But uh, if we specialize on manufacturing, uh, there are many uh, breakpoints, uh, touch points uh, for for simulation. Sure. So so if I make plans in my head, this is already a simulation. In a way, yes. In a okay. way, yes. You, okay. you, you have to convert this to computer, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, uh, sure. For, 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 for extending your memory and extend your mindset. Cool. That's 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 actually super interesting because this is like uh, expanding the, the, the field. It's expanding the definition because like for me, like previously simulation was pretty much, you know, something that, yeah, AutoCAD, this is a simulation for sure. Like maybe right. some Excel planning, but like the fact that any type of making any assumptions and playing, like for me, simulation is also playing with assumptions, right? A little bit. Yes. Yes. So this is this is this is super interesting. Okay, so let's switch gear into the into the industry 4.0 context, right? So yes. could you like maybe tell tell us a little bit more about type of work that you have done when it comes right. to the industry 4.0? Sure. Uh, so this is definitely a, a popular and buzzword for for us. Of course, of course. It started at uh, in 2011 uh, and initiated by Germany, and uh, that is also different than the previous industrial uh, industrial uh, revolutions because this is uh, announced, okay? But no other industrial revolutions as the history uh, as they are uh, known in history is announced before has announced before so uh, this is rather different uh, uh, is it really a revolution it's a good question and i can say uh, well yes yes but what 
perhaps annoys people is uh, there is a definite um, start of this revolution. Maybe that annoys people. In any way, we have the technology and we have advanced technology now, and they are readily available for making things much more better. And we see uh, many uh, results of this technology growth in our daily lives and also in, in manufacturing. People now talking about uh, dark factories. Dark doesn't mean dark side of manufacturing, but it means use of extensive technology and uh, in fact uh, making machines smarter. Okay, uh, so uh, it is a revolution and uh, from its start in uh, 2011, we see many uh, advances uh, in manufacturing, many uh, effects to uh, manufac uh, manufacturing, but still we have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. And the work, uh, let me finish with, uh, with this, the work I do is, uh, in my research, I uh, investigated the role of simulation within this era, okay, Industry 4.0. Uh, so, uh, what is the role of simulation in uh, true terms? And uh, with with a book, uh, we uh, ended this research. Well, uh, milestone in the research. Uh, this revealed that uh, there is definitely a great role of simulation in Industry 4.0. In fact, it is one of the main drivers because all technologies involved in Industry 4.0 require simulation somehow, right? Even if you are uh, an IoT uh, producer, a manufacturer, you still need simulation. While you design your product, you use simulation. Okay, and uh, there are many other technologies I can I can talk. But uh, sure thing, yeah. But like, okay, so, but I I kind of want to go back. So you're saying that this is the only revolution that has been announced and that has been Correct. kind of pushed a little bit because like everything was like you know yes. done by economics historians like yeah there was this revolution this revolution and this revolution there was uh, steam there was electricity there was automation now there is like a uh, data revolution right so digital revolution so yes uh, but this one was announced and this is this is why it's people are reluctant to it right a little bit and uh, to this buzzword yes okay but so, and also what you're saying is that everything in industry for all re requires a simulation that's correct i can say that again okay so and here's the tricky question so why the knowledge and i find myself pretty knowledgeable uh, when it comes to industry for all like considering the average. So why I still don't didn't before our our conversation? Why I still didn't see the simulation as uh, that critical as as everyone else? Right. Uh, for instance, you see it. Well, uh, I do because uh, it is kind of uh, uh, the answer uh, stays in the uh, the world. Okay, simulation is is very generic. Okay, uh, what, what I mean is uh, CAD CAM is there for many years, ten to, uh, a couple of decades, it's, it's there. But what they are doing in CAD CAM, okay, is uh, actually simulation. We don't name it as simulation, they name it as simulation, but they were using it already, okay? Uh, so uh, all the technologies uh, still uh, do the uh, sim simulation and uh, it was there, but it was not uh, named. So, whereas now, uh, whatever we do, we can name is uh, the simulation part of it as a simulation. And there is no, uh, there is no harm in this. Uh, but of course, being that generic is also dangerous. Uh, let me remind you a saying from Alexander Duma, all generalizations are dangerous, including this one. So okay. what this, this means is, uh, if we are making a simulation a generic term, it is dangerous for us. So we want to be, uh, we need to be specific, okay? Uh, not naming simulation explicitly uh, can cause uh, this, your feeling, I mean. 
Uh, well, as, whereas now we can talk about uh, simulation more openly because the technology involved in Industry 4.0 and uh, all these technologies still uh, requiring or using simulation technology in some sense. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but uh, that is for sure that all everything is happening on computer, right? There is more, uh, more, more and more use of computer, and uh, what we're doing on computer is mostly simulation or mimicking the reality before sure. actually doing in real. Sure thing. So this is actually interesting. So. Uh, can we double click into the specifics a little bit? Uh, sure. Can we like sure. maybe double click a little bit? So, what um, specific simulations do I need when it comes to the industry for all? Right. Uh, for computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing, we definitely need uh, simulation. I mean, not only drawing uh, your parts or your products 3D representation, you also need to. Uh, move those 3D entities uh, in virtual, okay? That, in fact, brings us uh, some other terminologies in industrial uh, industry 4.0, which is uh, cyber physical systems, CPS. And also, uh, there is another terminology, which is digital tool, okay? Uh, now, let's put the uh, CAD CAM uh, in one side, and let's open another site, okay, which is augmented reality and virtual reality. So those two technologies uh, are also growing today, and they are purely simulations. Because what do you do is by uh, putting on uh, Hololens, for example, uh, you are seeing a different world other than the real world, and what you uh, look uh, has another dimension. Uh, on your uh, in front of your eyes, so that dimension is is simulation, because when you look at the uh, machine, for example, you see uh, not only the physical machine but also uh, um, reflected views of uh, the heat or the uh, uh, maintenance requirements or the worker who is responsible for that and some other knowledge. So all this is a kind of also simulation. And more than that, what you also do is you control uh, machinery and your devices, resources with, with uh, software. And those software, if they are used for what if scenarios, are called uh, digital things, right? Uh, but those controlling software should allow this uh, to make uh, those software a digital tool because uh, not a PSC controller software is the digital tool uh, and let's name this okay but if you do some what if analysis with those software and those that software is capable of doing that then that is called digital soft uh, digital tool so so we have these concepts then uh, CPS uh, cyber physical systems digital tools and some other technologies which support that. Even the IoT devices send messages to, to controlling uh, software, like uh, digital twins, and uh, the digital twin must know with that many data uh, what it can, it can do. Of course, with that data, uh, that can be used for good, for something uh, making uh, better predictions, for example, or for making uh, instant alerts or some making predictive maintenance uh, things. So many concepts exist, but uh, I want to emphasize the what if requirement, which is plan for the future, uh, which uh, make this, uh, this, those software uh, simulation. Okay, so do you have any cool like implementation case studies that you maybe can share? Like, um, like you can talk about them or, or like whatever you, you think is, 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 is best. Like I, I, I like because according sure. to what our listeners and, and, and audience say and they really like when our lectures and our guests like talk about case studies and about uh, generally the, the examples. So do you have any cool 
uh, any 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 really inspiring example of applying the digital twin in the day-to-day -day operations of a company? Sure. Um, without naming uh, where... Sure, uh, it doesn't I have applied. to be. Uh, in a generic term, I can tell. Uh, in a uh, plastic uh, manufacturer in Turkey, uh, we implemented uh, a digital twin uh, by uh, picking data from MES. Uh, MES, Manufacturing Execution System. So that is one of the information systems uh, mm -hmm. which exist in uh, manufacturing facilities and it uh, requires IoT devices and a collection of uh, data from machinery. So what we did is collect data from MES and uh, look at the frequencies of uh, failures on machines. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mass data has, has that. And with that data, uh, we can uh, have a retrospective uh, failure data. So by analyzing this, uh, we can uh, get a profile of the failures. And with those profiles, we can get a, a prediction for the next failure for a specific machine or groups of machines. So this is for predict. This is called predictive maintenance. So in a digital twin, uh, which is a complete simulation of that manufacturing company, which uh, has uh, injection molding machines, etc. Because we are talking about uh, plastic material and PA six six material. Um, with those predictions. Uh, drive the digital twin or, or the simulation model of that manufacturing uh, company. So with those predictions as input and with the uh, simulation model uh, as the core, we created a dig digital twin, which uh, told us uh, when to maintain a machine or uh, what when to replace uh, those machines due to their uh, end of life. And this was based on some uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. What was the what was the modeling behind this? Well, uh, in the simulation core, uh, there is simulation software, uh, and there are many uh, commercial off-the-shelf simulation software available in the market. Uh, but for the prediction side, we created our own uh, algorithms, uh, and those algorithms are depicted from uh, artificial intelligence. In okay. the sense that uh, there is big data, and uh, though that the big data has the profiles of uh, failures and types of it. Is it uh, due to uh, electricity, uh, due to uh, the heating problem, or due to operator problem? So these kind of things uh, make this data uh, quite good uh, medium for artificial intelligence for us to you know play with the data and get the profiles of failures. Sure. So at the end of the day, it was AI that helped to get these simulations. That is correct. Okay. Uh, AI, big data, data analytics are kind of feeding simulations, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it's the period state, for, for example, uh, perhaps. So sure. where a simulation is the engine for using these inputs and creating some value. Mm -hmm. Sure thing, but so at the end of the day, uh, we used AI, but before we did, it's like we actually, need, like, what about the data in the machine? So, because according to the conversations we had with our different guests, for instance, Tomasz Koschmider from A4B, which is like a consultancy doing the uh, mostly the implementations of Industry for All, yes. um, there is this saying, which is like, sorry for the profanity, but there's, there's shit in, shit out, right? That if you plug in like bad data, uh, yes. you get bad results. So how about like, how did you approach the data gathering process? Because from my yeah. experience as a, I work mostly with SaaS companies, it's yes. all about getting the right data. And uh, because there is too many data points right. and it's really hard to get through them. So how did you approach this? Right. Uh, before replying to that, uh, I also want to um, uh, rephrase uh, from my professor, uh, Professor Mike Pitt. He says, uh, don't fall in love with data. Okay? And this is in fact correct. 
if you have data as a data analyst, you fall in love with it and you directly start to analyze it. Okay. Whereas this data is from a real system and it requires uh, some pre-analysis and cleaning and understanding. So conceptually, you uh, imagine uh, where this data is for, coming from. Uh, for example, even if the machines are generating and the sensors are generating those data and it's not a man-made data, still it requires uh, that generic uh, synthesis. Because uh, is it really recording the right thing? I'm talking about the IoT device. Is it really uh, recording at the right time? Uh, so these many questions should be asked before starting the analysis, okay? Uh, we rely on IoT devices and we assume that they are co collecting the right uh, data at the right time. But is it really the case? Uh, is there a human uh, interaction for uh, in this data collection uh, uh, period? So that's also another thing. Or I'm talking about the high technology, perhaps, uh, well, today's technology, IoT devices, but uh, still in many manufacturing companies, uh, which are quite not mature for uh, Industry 4.0, still require man-made, hand-made uh, data, uh, filling the forms, etc. So if this is the case, then uh, we have more things to do. What I mean is, there is definitely a human factor. So in this, in this case study, for example, uh, we uh, plotted that uh, the data is recorded by the end of the shift. So a shift is for eight hours, and initially they don't record the hand-generated uh, data, filling the form, etc. But they do it by the end. Whereas we require instant data for any event. Uh, so that, for example, uh, is a good example for cleaning or understanding the data. So we still have this kind of uh, real-world touches uh, for uh, even uh, creating AI models, all right? Data is good, yes, okay, but we must not be away from the reality. What is, how is this data generated? What are the dynamics behind those uh, data generation? Once we have clear and uh, trustable data, then our task is switch to algorithms. Okay, so it's 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 all about uh, getting the, the the right data and understanding what is behind them. Then you can try to use AI ML to to see, and then you can make simulation based on that. Kind right. of like in a, in a, in in a, if we streamline this process into like three steps, um, that's understandable. So. What about the business impact that for this particular company, like this plastic manufacturing company, what was the yes. business impact for the spray addictive maintenance? Can you share maybe some some data on that as well? Sure. Uh, what initially they had as, uh, as a team of um, uh, maintenance uh, technicians. So with this study, uh, they uh, definitely benefit from uh, from the predictive maintenance and simulation uh, and what if scenarios uh, and study. What, uh, what this ended up with uh, a reduction in maintenance team because uh, they now know uh, when the next failure will happen. And also, uh, this is operative uh, benefit uh, in operational level. Uh, this is a benefit. Uh, what I don't mean is uh, they they kick off those technicians. I don't mean that. They use those technicians for, uh, for somewhere else. For example, for setting up machines, whereas uh, which is quite uh, requiring quite a task force for uh, plastic injection molding uh, industry. Uh, so instead of maintenance, those guys because of those savings uh, in predictions is used for somewhere else. Uh, this is the operational level. For the strategic level, for the long-term benefit of this study, they see the lifetime of, uh, of machines or the components of those machines in manufacturing. And they put uh, this uh, turn to procurement planning for uh, device uh, procurement. Uh, so 
that is also a mid-term uh, benefit. And in the long-term benefit, again, in strategic level, uh, they think about renewing the machinery, uh, when to renew, because they could now uh, better predict when a specific machine will fail. Uh, at the age of uh, 20 or more, for example, will definitely fail. Yes, we know, but with the maintenance, with the predictive maintenance, we extend their lives. So, mm -hmm. but still, uh, for uh, when to renew the uh, machine can be uh, better studied with uh, uh, those models. Sure. So, but so do you know? Uh, but what about the impact on cost savings? Because I'm assuming this was the impact for for costs, right? Right. Uh, for the maintenance team, uh, they save about uh, ten to twenty percent. Uh, okay. I can say, just because of making uh, this automated uh, data collection and analysis for the maintenance, and also uh, for the long-term planning, uh, a figure is not to, uh, right to give. Uh, so uh, I would rather uh, not give any figure for, for that mm -hmm. side. But for the uh, operational level savings, we are talking about 10 to 20% of savings. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yes, yes, because uh, they were not very good in planning for the maintenance. Uh, what what happens most uh, industrial facilities is they do not maintain the machinery. Okay, uh, even if until it breaks, <laughs> until it breaks. That is the reality. Okay, that's exactly the case. Uh, but but this is normal. I mean, making. Uh, the, uh, the first step is to uh, have the initiative to uh, work with this kind of technologies in industries, okay? And uh, when we are talking about dark factories, okay, those dark, dark factories is extensive use cases of uh, these predictive maintenance things, for example. Uh, by the way, I'm talking about predictive, predictive maintenance as a case study I took, but uh, there are more case studies uh, I, I can tell in the industrial and in the installation. We, we, will, we will get to that because this is this one we saw about the cost. The next one I would like to ask you about the revenue side, which is like keep this in mind. Yes. But sure. like I want to go back to this. Uh, so we have like 10 to 20 percent cost savings, assuming that they spend, yes. let's say that they're spending 10 million uh, euros on the staff and the, on the let's say for let's 1 million euros for predictive maintenance i think this for for maintenance yes. operation costs let's say this is a fair so they are saving like 200,000 just by applying the simulations and i learning on that yes so what was the roi return on investment from the project that they have done because you're saying that 10 to 20% but they had to invest what was the yeah. what is the roi here can you like I, i'm fine with percentage figure obviously but i just want yeah. our audience to understand the real tangible impact of industry for all here right most of the uh, return on investment matters in industrial engineering projects just like this is quite short i can tell and in this case it was something uh, just like more than a year like 14 months or something. So it is nothing. What I mean is uh, they had already IoT devices which collect data. They had already mass, which they have uh, information system for managing the machinery. Uh, and what this did is just to use those uh, facilities and make it more manageable, okay? Remember, buying an ERP, buying a mass software does not solve everything okay you have to use them efficiently and this use case is a good example of uh, using mass in our case efficiently so uh, i urge all our industrial partners uh, not to rely on erp and mes uh, manufacturing execution systems uh, alone uh, they are good they, they are essential yes but uh, they must be used in, in an effective way. And also, uh, let's touch also to those vendors, uh, ERP vendors and MES vendors, that they are not solving all the problems in facilities. For example, predictive maintenance, they claim that their 
uh, solution is good for for the factory to uh, plan ahead uh, their maintenance schedule etc but uh, is this plan a good plan is a is an optimal plan it's a, it's a questionable thing so in those cases uh, uh, we we can rely on some uh, other solutions uh, other than those big manufact big vendors of ERP and SAP uh, sorry uh, I'm sorry ERP and MES uh, vendors okay uh, this is true for also uh, production planning by the way so you're saying <laughs> that in 14 months they have literally retrieved the investment from this yes it's like effectively it's like playing on stock market if you would consider like the, <laughs> the roi is like 14 months is yes. so just to give you a perspective when yes. venture capital fund in startup world invest in uh or private equity let's say private equity they yes. expect the double to double the what they that they put into but within five years period right Yes. So <laughs> I, I'm not so they here they are retrieving twenty percent in fourteen months. So yes. effectively, this is like thirty percent premium over the investments in the in the capital world. Like I'm just obviously showing like two okay. different sides, but assuming the effectiveness and allocation of the capital. Yes. This is super super effective considering where you put this one euro considering this i this i can say this again and i i, I agree with uh, definitely what you are saying and it was a good summary most industrial engineering efficiency projects are like this i can say what i mean is to use your resources more effectively and uh well more effectively is the right word uh, so uh what you do is you have uh resources not only the capital, but and the, the capital is converted into machinery and uh, crew or resources, for example. But if you do not use them efficiently, you lose them. You lose them, but you do not know uh, what you are losing. So in industrial engineering uh, and operation research, try to solve this issue, right? And in fact, there is motto for operation research and management science, which is the science for better. Okay. Well, all engineering fields and every, all, all of us are trying to achieve this ultimate objective to make things better. But we are doing this by using analytics, by using mathematics, by using simulation and optimization. So uh, not all uh, organizations are benefiting from that. And this use case is just one example. And in fact, uh, the uh, community in our uh, Operation research and management science uh, makes the estimates that we are wasting a lot of resources just because not to use them uh, effectively and efficiently. So uh, this managerial point of view uh, for uh, industrial 4.0 is not discussed well. More more uh, discussion is done for the technologies, and this uh, reminds me that it's like a marketing campaign, right? Let's sell these IoT devices. Let's say this, uh, uh, I don't know what other technologies exist. Well, there are many technologies which I didn't count, but mm -hmm. within this industry 4.0, uh, we are trying to uh, make, uh, we, are, we are trying to sell those technologies. But what is also important is to make use of all this effectively uh, use them and efficiently manage them, right? And that is where, in fact, uh, operational research and artificial intelligence uh, comes to the play. And simulation is just a medium, uh, just a tool for that. Cool. So this is just like absolutely uh, amazing when it comes to like how how great the simulations can work in the in the industry context and in the cost uh, perspective. Yes, and this is this is really really great. And what about the mm, the revenue side of the business? Do you have any case studies that you have worked on when it comes to actually helping increase the revenues? Because this is like one thing is predictive maintenance, you know, facility planning, production planning, but yeah. there is like all about like sales forecasting, like marketing forecasting, right. 
Do you have any experience for that well, with that as well? Um, we have experience also for uh, increased revenue and simulation study definitely increase revenue. That is for sure. There is reason. There are some reasons behind that. First of all, when you start a project, simulation project, uh, the organization, in a, a different term, shapes itself. Okay. Even starting a project uh, for improving things, for making uh, effective and efficiency, increasing the efficiency, uh, organization is shaped. Okay. Well, what that means is it starts or it initiates change, change for the better, right? Mm -hmm. So that definitely uh, has a, a revenue implication. Okay. And the level of revenue implication. Uh, revenue increase depends on how uh, things are done on that organization and it's difficult to uh, give uh, some examples because uh, it depends also on uh, the current status of uh, current professionalism or current current way of doing business in those organizations but we can talk about one percent increase to uh, 60 percent increase in revenue Okay, it right. depends on how uh, the organization is managing itself prior to those studies. But those studies, simulation studies, or uh, improving uh, the uh, systems uh, in management uh, in, or in other respects, uh, definitely has caused, uh, sorry, uh, revenue implications, revenue increase implications. Um, there are good case studies in uh, in the software uh, which my company is uh, is a reseller, is, which is Simulate. Simulate.com uh, will uh, show you some good case studies, and uh, what what you ask is difficult to answer. What what is the direct implications of revenue? But uh, I cannot give a direct uh, inf uh, figure, perhaps. Sure. For the like, maintenance, it, it is uh, it is easier to talk about numbers. So actually, here the 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 impact is more intangible, right? This is more soft. It is more about like changing the capabilities of the organization, reshaping the mindsets. Uh, yes. Kind of uh, changing the ways of working, right? That we yeah. we work in a different way. We try different things. We we test and learn. We bring this innovation mindset right in place. So, yes. so this is this is something uh, that works here. So, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, because you have mentioned the software? Could you tell us a little bit more about what you do at Simarter and what you do in uh, with Simulate as as a tool and generally uh, like a little bit on the on the kind of business side of of of, of your work because. That sure. the fact that you have amazing publications and you are worldwide know like expert, this is what we know, and this is why you're like you were invited to Stanversity. But while we spoke, we, we have discovered that you're also doing like a lot of business projects, and yes. you're like you're you're this rare type of practitioner and theorist, which I think is right. uh, is interesting. So uh could you tell a little bit more about Simarter, about the company itself, how you grow? Uh, what is the what is the what is the size of this company that you're running as well? Right, um, uh, we we specialize in simulation and optimization, uh, and uh, we not only use uh, codes uh, to uh, to create projects, but also we uh, build uh, our own software. Uh, there's a software called Planata, which is for detailed scheduling and planning in production. Uh, which I will mention uh, that later. And also, uh, we are using uh, a simulation software, uh, Simulate. Uh, Simulate is one of the uh, simulation software available in the market. And okay. what we do is, uh, if we approach to a, a, a customer, an industrial customer or from other domains, uh, we first analyze uh, their system. And uh, if they come up with a problem, uh, we structure that problem. If there is no problem that they can st uh, uh, structure, then we help them structure the, the problem so that we can offer a solution uh, for that problem or problems. 
uh, by mm -hmm. using uh, simulation models. So uh, as simulator, we are uh, taking this approach. First, understand the problem uh, and then uh, offer a solution to that problem. Okay, and for the solution, there can be uh, different methodologies. Uh, simulation is, is one methodology which we like and which we extensively apply. And also, uh, we have uh, the optimization in our toolbox. Uh, when we, we say optimization, we mean mathematical optimization. Uh, when we are, uh, we are talking about linear programming, integer programming, etc., uh, or heuristic uh, optimization. So all of these are in our uh, tool sets. So mm -hmm. software, the software uh, we are uh, building uh, uh, is Planeta, which is uh, filling the planning and scheduling gap in production. But we are doing this in a smart way, which is uh, we are using artificial intelligence uh, for creating uh, schedules. Scheduling is, by the way, a great problem in manufacturing. Well, uh, nowadays, uh, in daily practice, it is done uh, using Excel and with some smart engineers, uh, planning engineers, who can do this, or with pen and paper, more basically. <laughs> well, well, the question is, who will do what? Uh, this is the basic question in uh, production schedule. Which machine which, uh, will do which, which job? Which order should be fulfilled in manufacturing? So these are the questions uh, which uh, our software can answer in a smart mm -hmm. way. And it removes the um, human factor in, in, in planning, but what also gives the flexibility. So uh, away from industry, our, our company is also specialized in healthcare, uh, which is not a topic we need to discuss perhaps, but what uh, we are saying, Industry 4.0, is also heading towards healthcare for zero, okay? Because in the healthcare, uh, there are also many technologies involved, and those technologies are depicted from industry, right? Including sensors, uh, robotics, all. Uh, because the ultimate objective is to make life uh, better for for humans, and we use technology for that. So healthcare for zero involves also simulation and. Mm -hmm. As a company, we are also specialized in healthcare simulations and we are developing simulation models for pharmaceutical companies and healthcare device manufacturers uh, and, uh, and also uh, other uh, healthcare stake stakeholders who are the uh, commissioners uh, sure. or uh, governments, etc. So this is like a, a consulting company that helps yes, correct, yes. save the... Oh, yeah. uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, Simart is a management consultant company with analytic solutions. So Okay, uh, cool. So uh, it's, it's, it's a mix of both. It's a mix of both. That differs from classical uh, management consultants firms. Sure, sure, sure. That's 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 awesome. So, so you're you're also like the, the, to sum it up. You 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 have a lot of case studies that you uh, that you can that you can share with the uh, with the world. So, yes. uh, so I have a question regarding the the human factor because you were talking a lot about uh, about like reshaping the organization, shaking the organization. Yes. So uh, and, and one of the things that we also try to build with Stanversity in our uh, uh, in our um, let's say uh, learning journey during our studies that obviously you and I are organizing together uh, yes. is um, this part of this roadmap of uh, increasing the capabilities and managing and then management right in itself. So, yes, what are the usual pushbacks? That you see within the as a consultant, as an academic, when you research companies, as a practitioner, when you're doing simulations on your own, what are the usual pushbacks within the organizations when it comes to implementing simulate like the 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 like I would call it hardcore simulations because yeah. AI ML <laughs> is not like it's not Excel sheet right this is like hardcore I I I prefer to call it hardcore simulations yes. uh, or more more sophisticated more advanced ones let's call it this way. So yeah. what is what are the usual pushbacks here uh, the organizations have? Right. Um, when you go to an organization, uh, these kind of uh, projects uh, scares people. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
And in fact, this is one of the uh, skill part of Industry 402, okay? Because there is a belief that in every industrial revolution, humans will uh, be jobless, okay? Uh, that scare is also true for Industry 40. So when we approach to a project, uh, they also see, uh, they also feel that uh, this uh, this threat, okay? Because they think that uh, they are doing some things we uh, not correct, and we are threatening them that uh, we need to change uh, themselves. Well, uh, this is one of the main, uh, you know, uh, difficulties in our projects. Uh, so this is a kind of a resistance to change, all right? And that is normal. This is, again, a human uh, behavior because uh, they want to be in a safe position. And this kind of their uh, usual way of doing things, uh, if they, uh, they change, that may uh, harm them. That is the feeling, but that is not the uh, reality. What uh, this creates is after implementing such uh, projects, improving projects, they will uh, like the outcomes. They will like uh, what is achieved because uh, things will be easier, things will be simpler, things will be clearer after such projects. Uh, but we need to also give this uh, trust to them, to uh, the clients. Uh, well, managers want always the better. Uh, they always want more revenue and less problem, etc. But when you go to uh, uh, lower levels uh, in the organization, uh, they have this kind of uh, resistances. And uh, first you must, or we must first uh, fight with this, that uh, we are actually helping. Even the technology helps, Industry 4.0 helps the way uh, the business is done. So it's not a threat. Uh, and in, if you look at the history, it's always, it was always the case. Uh, all industrial revolutions uh, threatened uh, humans, but no humans were jobless. Always we uh, created new jobs with those yeah. new technologies. Yeah, because so, there is a new paradigm, new markets opening, right? Exactly, There's a new productivity exactly. paradigm, yeah. Exactly. So, For example, think about the demand. Even the demand is changing. We are demanding as consumers uh, a specific product designed for us with specific specifications, with specific calls, etc. So this creates a huge pressure on manufacturing. How are we going to manufacture those many items, those many types of items, customized products, right? So industry forestry is also uh, something about that. Uh, it's a customized production for uh, satisfying today's customized needs, customized sure, demand. Sure. So, so is it fair to kind of like um, to assume and to conclude that this uh, fear that people have is kind of similar to this 19th century workers like afraid that like the, the in this like Adam Smith's uh, factory that this work that this you know sewing machines uh, will take fabric machines right will take their jobs and this is why they destroyed these machines right now they can't destroy the machines but yeah. they are more than fine with uh being a saboteur in the organizations trying to you know stop any any project that is yes. happening okay. this is right. So it the is, fear management is the critical capability that you need to learn. It's just like that, I can say. It's just like that. I mean, uh, people will think that instead of uh, an operator, for example, sitting uh, in front of an injection molding machine, uh, they can, uh, well, with the industry 4.0, there, there will be no need for that person to stay there because the machine will work itself okay in a smart way but this threat is is a general generic threat uh, for technology right but as i said every industrial technology industrial revolution brought new types of uh, jobs or requirements for new skill sets right for example 10 years ago we didn't have a position in our companies for managing the social networks right but there is now this position which a human can do, right? 
whatever we do in technology, we still need uh, humans. That's for sure. I'm not uh, biased towards you know technology will kill us, uh, robots will kill us. I'm not uh, 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 for that. It's no, but there's all these reports like you know which jobs will be replaced with X, sure. Y, Z, right? You know, like the, the AI or whatever. Like there is like this because like these reports are clickable. Everyone, you know, they are like shared publicly. Um, but this is like I, I also don't believe it, right? I, I honestly like why it will impact some jobs. That's hundred yeah. percent. But I'm not necessarily believing this is this is this is true, right? Like, like full time. Hey, not at all. Not at all. Humans yeah. will be humans. As ever. Yeah, <laughs> we, we 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 still need it. So, uh, like, just to, to to try to conclude our because we're we're shortly running uh, out of time. And yes. do you have any like regarding the simulations and and maybe for someone who wants to start with simulations like the real real simulations or go beyond yes. the, the 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 um aforementioned excel uh yes. what would you be what would be your um, parting words uh for instance considering this webinar right um there are definitely many sources for uh building simulation models and also uh, by using many uh, different software. If you want to uh, be an expert in Excel and want to simulate using Excel, uh, there are sources how to do this, right? Uh, well, uh, of course, you must have a general view of what you are doing in simulation and what you want to achieve. This, this is, in fact, uh, the conceptualization phase of simulation modeling. And that is one of the uh, starting and uh, big uh, solutions. You need to create a, a conceptual model before actually creating a simulation model. And hopefully, this summer, uh, we will uh, teach uh, how to do these in the Stanmarsity course. Uh, yeah. It's, it's this summer, right? Uh, yeah, like this is this is this is May. We are kicking this off like May twenty twenty ninth, right? As 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 discussed, yes. uh, we we're going to do this. Um, definitely, we already have a group. Um, FYI, this is something that I can share publicly, and, and you can quote me on that. So like people, we have a group. We will kick off the studies, and actually, we might have a waiting list here. So in case you're still interested, uh, like. I really suggest to uh, I really suggest to um, apply and, and for and enroll for the studies because the 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 play the, the space for and the seats uh, for our listeners uh, they are limited. So we already we can already say that we are super satisfied that this is happening and this is really happening. Uh, so 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 that that's amazing. It's a great initiative, uh, and I congratulate you and your, your team. Uh, that is something uh, required for, uh, well, we, we diminish the borders, but for all nations, we, uh, we require this kind of uh, condensed, extensive, uh, exclusive courses for the industry, uh, for uh, training the uh, management, uh, and uh, know, uh, teach them how uh, these concepts are getting together and uh, where they start from, uh, they, where they must start from. So these courses really uh, are helpful for in this regard too. That's 100% true. And uh, on top of that, this is, this is still that uh, the pandemic kind of opened uh, opened this opportunity, right? So, yes, and the, yes. But the trends will hold. And, and this is something that we are trying to build on and that's for sure this is like just for the standversity sake like this is this is i think mean, really like that there's a good this is a good time for education like while some people may not see it this way like some universities maybe you know old school uh mindset people mm, yeah. but i totally believe this is a great time for education this is where the time where the barriers are gone this is the time where the access of knowledge democratized I think this is a good time to to uh, to be in this forefront of the education. So this is something that we also try to uh, try to leverage. I agree. I agree. I hundred percent agree with you. Okay. Um, 
Thank you. Uh, this was an amazing conversation we had. I, 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 it was super, super enjoyable for me and very, very thoughtful, like mind bending when it comes to what the simulation is, yeah. uh, what the, um, how to apply it, like this case study. We need to write down this case study of this plastic manufacturing company. This is like a clear, decent ROI of this field. So, yeah. so that's actually uh, that's actually enormous value uh that 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 was generated with the simulations itself it is like you know you do this and you get this this is clear as as a sky so so i, I thank you for that thanks for sharing this knowledge with with, with our audience mm -hmm. uh, FYI, this all will be on youtube so everyone can access it uh and this will be shared on linkedin on facebook uh so we can always access it we will also try to uh, run it towards the podcast, but we need to clean the audio first. <laughs> so thank you a lot for, for, for finding the time. Thanks. Thanks for this webinar and looking forward to it. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.